And now we're getting into the media review portion of our show, or as Professor Van Helsing calls it, The ghastly paraphernalia of our beneficial trade. He delivers that line so well, doesn't he? Our spotlight media review for the week is on Roger Zelazny's A Night in the Lonesome October. It was published in 1993, which unfortunately was near the end of his life. It's 32 chapters long. The gist of it, it represents a night in the month of October. It's a bit like Dracula, where it's told in journal entries, but it's all in first person. Interestingly enough, the point of view is actually from an animal, Snuff, who is Jack the Ripper's companion. It takes place in London and its environments, and there's a bit of a Lovecraftian feel to it. And other interesting characters in the books we can refer to as the good doctor, Larry Talbot, Crazy Jill, Vicar Roberts, Owen, Rastoff, Morris, and Macabre, and a man named the Count. If you put two and two together, you might be able to find out which Victorian characters they're referring to. There is also the Great Detective. Hopefully, I won't have to explain that one to you. We're talking about this semi-Lovecraftian world where reality and fantasy mix, and the doors are opened and then the realm of the great old ones is actually revealed. And under certain conditions, the doors can be opened or closed. These characters take side, one against the other, and the folks who open the door, they've never won. And that is the gist of what essentially is the thread of the novel, which is called The Game. Because it's told from the point of view of animals who actually talk and communicate with their masters, it might feel like it's a little bit juvenile and not for adults. But it is. The story is very good, it's extremely well written and gripping, and it also translates well to audio. Roger Zelazny himself actually did a version of The Night in the Lonesome October right before his death. It's been released on audiobook, and I'll point you to that at the end. The book itself was nominated for a Nebula Award for Best Novel in 1994. My only real problem with the book is... I'm not going to spoil too much, but there's a portion of the book where it goes into a bit of a Lovecraftian sequence, which doesn't seem to flow with the rest of it. It flows with the background and the structure, but the actual writing it seems to distract, and it goes a little bit too deep. Kind of like a story within a story within a story, which is a little bit too much. However, it's funny, it's sad, it's happy, there's consequences. You're not really sure who the antagonists and the protagonists really are. It's highly recommended. And without question, it does indeed get the Dracula podcast seal of approval. In fact, I suggest you buy it in multiple formats. Right now at Amazon.com, it's available at hardcover from 603 from sellers and paperback from 1293. It's a book that uh, actually smells like it's out of print. But the best part is they did an audio version of it. It's really expensive, but perhaps somewhere out in the friendly interwebs you can find some good place to pay for and download Roger Zelazny's really interesting flat voice. At first you might consider it a little boring, but it's he goes with the flow. He's actually a very good narrator. It's a great book. It's an even better audio experience. It's one of those rare gems that folks don't talk about anymore. So snatch it today and add it to your collection. <laughs> 